belief. So beliefs, they are fundamental. And we need to be aware of how they may be limiting us beyond our conscious awareness. On the whole, our unconscious mind seems to do what we ask it to do. You know, if we tell it that the world is scary, it tries to protect us. And if we tell it, tell it that the world is fun, it sort of takes us out into it. But there's one thing that you need to be aware of, okay? And that is that if our conscious thoughts are stated in the negative, okay, they struggle to be actioned by our unconscious mind. Um, let me try and give you a better example. If you went to the railway station ticket office and you said to the, to the ticket master, um, I don't want to go to London. The ticket master would say, okay, then uh, if you just like to wait over there and when you do know where you want to go, tell me uh, and then I can action that ticket for you. Yeah. So, so many people with anxiety and OCD, they know what they don't want, but they don't know what they do want. Therefore, what I'm pointing to is we need to be more precise in the conscious language that we use with others and within our own internal dialogue. You know, saying, I don't want to feel anxious means nothing to the unconscious mind. Um, so it might become, mm, calmness is more important to me. Um, if you say, I don't want intrusive thoughts, uh, you may change that to, um, I want to be able to ignore my thoughts. I can't get anything right might become, mm, I'm good at writing, uh, but it seems that I need to focus more on my ver verbal communication. And once what you're actually looking to do is positively stated as an understandable command, then at least it's possible for your own unconscious mind to take some sort of action. Uh, the statement, I'm bored, to the unconscious mind means nothing. Uh, but if you say, mm, I need to get more friends, I need to go out more, this is a command that the unconscious can respond to. So because your unconscious mind seems to align uh, with us and take us towards what we focus on, it benefits us to focus on what is good for us rather than all the fear-based negativity that anxiety and OCD tend to encourage us to focus on, you know, as part of their childlike intention to keep us trapped by doubt and what-if stories about a fearful future. And this is really important, which is why I really want to spend a bit more time explaining this to you um, and, and what you can do about harnessing the inherent capability of what your own unconscious mind can naturally do. Now, deep within our old part of our brain is a region called the reticular activating system. It's the RAS. And its function is key in controlling three main things. Firstly, our attention. Secondly, our goal achievement. And thirdly, keeping us alive and safe. So this is a crucial part of the brain, okay, that should we bother to retrain it, especially if you have anxiety or OCD, um, it makes complete sense because within anxiety and OCD, your attention is in the wrong place. Yeah? You're not necessarily achieving your goals. And although it's keeping you alive, it's doing it by imprisoning you rather than helping you to safely step out into the world. Now you can do your own research on the, uh, the RAS, but I want to give you a few headlines, okay? And show you how effectively uh, it can be harnessed to work in your advantage. So put simply, the RAS is what monitors every single one of the hundreds of millions of inputs received through your senses every second from the external world. You know? It then decides for you what it thinks is important and feeds that particular piece of information to your conscious mind where you think you consciously had that thought. Now, to help me to convey the power and the, 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 the relevance of this unconscious part of your brain, let me remind you that the unconscious brain is a million times faster and a million times more powerful than the conscious brain. Right? And to add even more perspective, consciously we can only process about a, a hundred pieces of information 
every second. In contrast, the unconscious, we receive 10 million bits of information uh, per second just from our eyes, then huge volumes of information from our hearing and the plentiful data from the nerve endings on our skin, which capture data, pressure, temperature, and the, the location of every, every part of us every second. That is a monstrous shed load of data, easily being handled by our unconscious brain. And we can only consciously handle a feeble 100 bits per second. Yeah? And yet we're so addicted to this part of our conscious thinking logical brain. So the role of the RAS is to drastically reduce all that data into something that's relevant to you, in line with controlling your attention, your goal achievement, and your safety. It's like a rapid, harsh, and laser-focused paring down of data done completely unconsciously and then fed to your conscious mind all in a fraction of a second. And this tiny bit of data is what you use to consciously make decisions and live your life from that point of view. So a really good question to ask at this point might be, how does the unconscious RAS knows what's good for you or what goals that you want to achieve? Now, some of it is just learned from programs, um, core animal responses, like responding to your name, being called out, or reacting to a loud noise, or becoming aware of a, a sexual opportunity. However, for the majority of the time, it takes its cue from where to place its focus from where you are consciously placing your focus, yeah? your attention, your awareness, uh, what's consciously on your mind. It assumes that what you're consciously focusing on is important, therefore it will filter accordingly all the reams of incoming data down into that which aligns with what you're consciously focusing on. Okay, let me see if I can put that a different way. If you're consciously focused on all the things that could go wrong, like worrying about being liked, or worrying about being perfect, then your RAS will filter for you um, all that information and present you with evidence of all the things that are going wrong in and around you in your life. And then this is the world that you virtually see and will, will form the beliefs that you have about yourself. Okay? And those beliefs will influence the actions that you take or don't take, which of course affects what goals you achieve or don't achieve. So where you place your conscious attention drives what the RAS serves up for you. Um, it's like when you buy a, a new car, suddenly you see the same car everywhere. Or you learn a new word. And then you, that same day you hear that word used somewhere else, or you, you learn about a new artist, and then all of a sudden you see his work everywhere. Uh, it's really quite simple, okay? And it's just how the brain works. So it would make a lot of sense to get your RAS consciously working for you, rather than unknowingly have it working against you. Um, let me give you a couple of exaggerated examples. So, person one thinks the world is a scary place, doesn't really have any clear goals, okay, or, or the goals are stated in the negative, like, um, I don't want to be anxious, okay, which of course is not saying what they do want, um, and perhaps they spend lots of time each day contemplating all the bad things that could happen. Their RAS will have a field day just blindly responding to that person's unknowing conscious requests from it. And he'll be flooded with examples of the world being a scary place, um, his goals won't be achieved because they're not known, and he will be shown every example of all his worst thoughts that his RAS can find each day. Let's contrast that to person number two, who perhaps is a, a glass half full optimist. So good events are filtered and passed up from the RAS into her conscious. She has a clear goal held in mind, perhaps about um, changing her job or becoming self-employed. And so the RAS makes it aware consciously any opportunities it sees from this mass of data that it pulls in and just 
feeds it to her, okay? Maybe she likes herself. Um, so any evidence of uh, other people liking her too is passed up from her RAS system into her conscious awareness, which further confirms her self-worth and increases her chances of taking action. Now, this is life-changing information that I'm giving you here. Um, it really is. And can you see why I've been asking you to placebo yourself for more positive statements? Can you see why I've been asking you to, to consider what you want from life? Can you see why I've been asking you to speak nicer to yourself? Like I've been saying from the beginning, if left unchecked, your unconscious brain will just do whatever it's been, been programmed to do. Therefore, we need to consciously reprogram the unconscious in the best way that the unconscious responds to being programmed, which is not through logical reason, because that's just how the conscious mind works. Now, I hope I'm explaining this clearly enough, um, but it's hard, okay? Um, and it's almost unbelievable that we're not taught this in school, but we're not. So let's get um, even more practical. What can we do now to make changes in our mind that would bear fruit within one or two months? Well, here's what I would suggest. Consciously keep talking yourself into what it is you want from life, stated in the positive with the outcomes you desire and the mindset you want to use. Then if any thought arises in your mind that is not in line with those goals, ignore them. How do you ignore them? by talking consciously over the top of them with what it is you want from life, stated in the positive, with the outcomes you desire, and the mindset you are wishing to use. <laughs> I put it a different way, basically, you keep talking yourself positively into what you want, and you disregard any thought or belief that opposes or challenges it. It's really quite simple, it's just very hard to do in the beginning. Um, Perhaps I can give you some more examples of what this inner dialogue um, may sound like. So the old story um, could be, oh, moving house is so stressful. The new story, oh, I'm so excited about the next phase of my life and the project of creating a wonderful new home for my family. Okay? The old story might be, oh, I've got the bother of clearing out my garage and taking all the waste to the tip. And this new story can be, oh, I'm looking so forward to my garage being orderly. Um, an old story might be, oh, there are no jobs around due to the recession. And the new story might be, there's always an opportunity when change happens. How can I let people know that I'm available? The old story might be, oh, my goal is to not have anxiety. And the new story, my goal is to retrain my my brain and use life as a form of exposure therapy which will allow me to get back to work within three months with an optimistic mindset and a kind playful sort of inner dialogue. The old story, oh no I spilt wine that stain will never come out. The new story, that was lucky it was just a glass and not the whole bottle. You know? Old story could be why do I have so much inner conflict and the new story could be Mm. My settler, nomad and warrior are slowly becoming friends. They're starting to realize they're on the same team and they're beginning to support each other's skills and differences. How can I remember to only be one at a time to reduce my internal conflict? Now, it doesn't really matter whether you consciously believe these things to be true or not. We are just running new inputs that will reprogram how our brain works for more positivity, calmness, and creative action. And can you see too how knowing what you want from life can be so powerful? And even if you don't ultimately know what you want, you can use intermediate, smaller goals until you do. This is uh, one of the reasons I made my vision board video, uh, and I watch it every morning, and I watch it every evening, because it's not that I consciously forgot what I want to do, but I want my unconscious mind to be focusing on where I want to go, not on where it wants to take me. And if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link in the notes below. Um, in fact, I need to make a new video as I've completed most of the goals on the old one. Uh, 
this stuff works. But you've got you to put in the effort. You've got to put in the time, okay, the repetition, the, the, to reprogram and to tell your unconscious mind what it is you want, what it is you're looking for. Repetition retrains the unconscious mind. Uh, here's a picture from my, uh, the home screen of my phone, okay? And each time I turn on my phone, um, I'm greeted with the top three or four things that I either need to do or that I'm reminding myself to think about to train my unconscious the way my conscious wants it to be trained, okay? Um, it just reminds me where I'm going. Uh, why do I do this? Because it works. It just works. It's just how our brain works. And for some reason, we're just not taught this.